أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونشهد إن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد محمد عبده ورسوله رب الشرح لي صدري وسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم Because you're worth it When I read the title of this talk I had chills because these few words, because you're worth it, are words that so many of us need to hear. But they're words that even when we do hear them, sometimes we don't believe them. And I think, you know, following Sheikh Yasser and his explanation of not getting sucked into this catchphrase of self-care and me day is absolutely beautiful and critical in setting the stage for understanding what we're talking about when we talk about our worth, when we talk about who we are, when we talk about what makes us who we are. And rather than running after this concept of self-care as a temporary solution, as something that may occupy our minds and distract us for a few moments, what we need to seek in order to truly believe and live that izzah, that sense of honor that Allah has bestowed within us is not self-care. It is self-compassion. Self-compassion, which we've lost because we often speak about the importance of showing compassion to those around us. We often speak about the importance of being compassionate to our neighbors, being compassionate to our children, being compassionate to our spouses. We speak about being compassionate in our da'wah work, and our activism. But how often do we stop and ask ourselves, am I compassionate to me? Do I take care of me in a way that links my heart, my soul, my well-being to the Creator? When we look at the examples that Sheikh Yasser began with, he reminded us of the importance of understanding the creation of Adam alayhi salam and the understanding that it was Adam alayhi salam who Allah Azza wa Jal commanded the angels to bow down to. So when we say you are worth it, it is not just mere words, it is because Allah Azza wa Jal created human beings and told all of creation, the angels and the jinn bow down to Adam alayhi salam. Why? Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal in His infinite wisdom has bestowed inside each and every one of us that initial seedling of ilm. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلِّهَا Ilm, knowledge. Something that we possess something that drives and fuels our ability to make decisions to consciously say, I will follow the righteous path or I will stray. And so we see when the first revelation came to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was searching, it was a revelation of ilm. اقرأ, اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقَ Allah Azza wa Jal is telling the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in essence telling all of us I have created you from this drop. But then what? اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ ربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم it is our ilm that sets us apart. But there is no ilm nafa, there is no beneficial ilm without amal. 
So we can't simply say, I have ilm, I learned, I listened to Sheikh Yasser, I went to Sheikh Umar Sulaiman's talk, I went to this speaker and, and this speaker's talk, and I read books and I have ilm. So now, now I'm going to find that sense of peace. It is ilm partnered with amal. What am I doing with that ilm? How do I carry it within me and how do I move it externally? How do I develop self-compassion within who I am simply by having ilm? When I first entered this room, I looked around and I thought it was interesting that the females far outnumbered the males. We live in a society today that often propagates the notion that it is soft and weak to speak of these things, to speak of self-worth, to speak about self-compassion, to speak about self-care. And so in that same age, we begin to see this idea of toxic masculinity growing, where anything that has to do with compassion, self-care, anything that has to do with that which is soft, we'll often see our brothers walk away from. Why? The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the most empathetic, was the most compassionate, was the most caring to his ummah, to those around him, to all he came into contact with, but he also had that self-compassion when he reminds us that our body has a right over us, when he reminds us that our families have a right over us, there is that ibadah, there is that connection with Allah Azza wa Jal, there is that filling, that emptiness within us with the nur of Allah. But there is also an understanding that when we partner that ilm with amal, when we utilize that compassion that we develop within ourselves and turn it externally towards compassion within our communities, then we are able to get closer and closer to our purpose of worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal in everything that we do. And so when we go back to the surah that Sheikh Yasir mentioned, Surah Al-Duha that was revealed to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, during a time where he was experiencing difficulty, when his heart was not at ease, when he worried and he wondered why the revelation had stopped, had paused. And in that surah, Allah Azza wa Jal speaks to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he reminds him, that just as there is the daybreak, there is also the night. But that your Lord has not forsaken you nor forgotten you. Alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa. He reminds the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he was found as an orphan and it was Allah azza wa jal that gave him refuge. And as the verses continue, there is a reminder, the amal. If the orphan comes and asks for aid, do not turn them away. If the one who is lost and seeking asks for guidance, do not turn them away. Because how can we be compassionate towards others if we do not show ourselves self-compassion first? And how can we show ourselves self-compassion if we are not compassionate towards others? And so we come to the why and the how and the what next. So we have the ilm. We recognize the light of Allah Azza wa Jal that exists within us. We recognize and we turn to the verse in the Quran which is known as the, the, the verse of Nur, Ayat al Nur. When Allah Azza wa Jal reminds us that He is Nuran ala Nur, He is light upon light, and He creates for us, conveys to us the parable of His light which is to envision a nook, a corner. And within that nook, in that niche, there is a glass lantern. And within that lantern, there is a wick that is wet with oil. 
And the oil shines so brightly that even without holding a flame to it, the light extends out of the glass of that lantern and it lights the east and the west. This is the nur of Allah. Now imagine if we can become like the glass of that lantern, if the light of Allah Azza wa Jal exists within us, and we, like the glass of the lantern, refract that light externally. We, like the glass of the lantern, reflect that light of Allah Azza wa Jal. How do we do it? We do it by understanding who we are. We do it by understanding why we're here. We do it by understanding why Allah Azza wa Jal in His infinite mercy and wisdom has placed each and every one of us in this room today. For the young woman who may have been molested as a child, you're worth it. For the young man who may have experienced bullying, who may have been labeled as a difficult child, you're worth it. For the young woman who is in an abusive relationship, who is struggling with criticism, whether from a mother, from a father, from a spouse. For the young man who is struggling financially, who is fighting off addictions, who is struggling trying to find his place in this world, you are worth it. Not because of Instagram or TikTok or the likes on Facebook that Sheikh Yasser mentioned. Not because of your own being, of your own birth and your own existence. You are worth it because Allah Azza wa Jal has told us that each and every one of us is worth it. And so when Sheikh Yasser touched upon the rising numbers of those who are taking their own lives, the rising numbers of those who are struggling with depression and anxiety, the rising numbers of those who engage in self-harm and self-loathing behaviors that are driven towards these behaviors because it hurts. Because it hurts when you feel like you're not worth it. Because it hurts when you feel like that light that you're seeking has been extinguished because it hurts when you hear the words of the Quran, when you're reminded, Ala you feel nothing. You feel emptiness. Your salah, which you're seeking, is not rich in meaning. And so it hurts. And you feel like there must be something wrong with me. I must be broken. I come to these conferences. I attend the masjid. I read these books. I listen to these lectures online. I like the posts from this sheikh and this sheikh. And yet, I feel nothing. The pain of my past still hurts. The words of criticism I grew up with still hurt. The abuses I suffer still hurt. Ilm with amal. Where is the amal? Were you placed in this room today? Because maybe there is someone sitting beside you who is meant to be the answer to your dua. Were you placed in this room today? Because Allah Azza wa Jal provides the means sometimes to ease our difficulty. Not sometimes, always. Allah Azza wa Jal does not bring us to a test without also bringing us the solution. But we have to seek it. So if you are struggling with your self-worth, if you have had thoughts of ending your life, if the pain becomes too unbearable and you feel like you just can't do it anymore, whether you're a male or a female, there is no weakness in admitting that it hurts. There is no weakness in identifying that there is pain. Allah Azza wa Jal reminds us in the Quran that we will be tested. We will be tested with something of fear and something of loss. That test is written for us, each and every one of us. 
And if you are experiencing that, ask yourself, why am I here? What am I meant to take from this session in particular? What am I supposed to carry out? How can I partner this ilm with amal? Speak to a counselor. Reach out to someone. There is no harm in being able to unpack that pain. That, it, that is what it means for us to be an ummah, to be like one body. Because if there is even one person in this room that is hurting, that is in pain, then every single one of us must feel it. And it is incumbent on every one of us to try to facilitate the path that can help unpack that pain. So I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal allows us the opportunities to partner our ilm with amal, allows us the opportunity to receive the answers to our dua, whether it is in the means of a person, a place, or a feeling and an emotion that we can capture. And I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal protects all of us, protects our children, and allows us to be of those who constantly serve him on our worship of him. Jazakumullah khair.